I promise you, you don't need any deep music theory to do this. You just need a system that works. And that's what I'm gonna show you. Don't reinvent the wheel, use the damn wheel. Shout out to the caveman who invented the wheel. We still use that thing. And that's the point with any invention or convention that exists. It's there to make things easier for everyone else. It's there so that we don't have to reinvent it each time we need it again. Could you imagine if we had to reinvent the wheel from scratch each time we needed a damn wheel? Yet, this is what so many producers do with their melodies. Instead of just using the damn wheel, which is basic music theory in this case, they are hell bent on inventing a new way to make melodies. And then they're shocked when it comes out sounding like ass. Just just use the damn wheel, bro. Jesus Christ. Choose your wheel, choose your chords. There are many basic wheels. Wooden spoke wheels, steel wheels, alloy wheels. Similarly, there are many kinds of basic chord progressions. Let's explore one for today as an example so that you can add it to your toolbox immediately. Then I'll give you a system for easily finding your own simple chord progressions that you can use repeatedly to make your music sound amazing. The Travis Scott chord progression. This is one of my favorite basic chord progressions, which is basically just two simple parts. A minor triad, followed by a major triad. But even the naming gets to be a bit too complex and is outside the scope of things that matter to this conversation. But I'm sure some nerd will still correct me in the comments. Look, no one cares, especially if you're just starting out. The only thing you need to know is how it's built, the structure they create when they are put together. The only thing you need to understand is the note spacing relationship between the first chord, minor, and the second chord, major. So here's a deeper explanation of exactly how you build this chord progression without thinking in confusing music theory terms. Place your first note wherever you like, I'll use F. Then go up two spaces from that note and place another note on the third space that you count. Now go up three spaces from here and place one more note on the fourth note space that you count. Minor chord done. Then we can duplicate this over for our second chord and make three minor adjustments to it. We'll move the bottom note up one space, the middle note up two spaces, and the top note up just one space. Boom, minor chord done. And this is how this progression is going to be built every single time, no matter where the notes actually are. As long as the note spaces are exactly the same as in this demonstration, you're going to get the exact same vibe every time. This chord progression is sometimes referred to as the Travis Scott chord progression. I think that's because it gives off a certain country twang while also conveying high energy. It's used in many of Travis Scott's best songs, my favorite example is Houston Fornication from Astroworld. That uses a B flat minor chord, which is followed by a B major chord. And both of those come together to make the basic structure that we just talked about. Same progression, different notes. Same mood or vibe, different tone. The chord progression in Houston Fornication ends with an A flat minor. So this is called a resolving chord and it's one of the ways that you can make basic chord progressions sound more interesting. We'll talk a bit more about stuff like that when we address methods for spicing up basic chord progressions. It's not just Travis Scott. The chord progression does not belong to Travis Scott. This is actually a common pop music chord progression. In fact, except for a small group of internet producers, no one refers to it as the Travis Scott chord progression. This is demonstrated well by Roy Woods' new album Mixed Emotions, where he used this chord progression in two different songs. The first example is Made Mistakes, which is the intro to the album. The first chord is an A sharp minor, and the second chord is a B major chord. The second example from Woods is That Thing, featuring Jada Kingdom, which is track seven on Mixed Emotions. The first chord is a G minor seventh, and the second chord is an A flat major seventh. By the way, A flat is just another way of saying G sharp, so you could technically refer to this as a G sharp major chord. As triads, these chords come together to make the full progression that we've been talking about so far.
They become sevenths by adding the harmonizing notes from the scales of each respective chord in the progression. That's not technically the right way to say it. Again, some nerd will probably just correct me. But further, this is getting outside the realm of things that are necessary to discuss in this lesson. But just a helpful tip you might enjoy if you're not a fucking audio purist. You can create a seventh of any fundamentally built minor chord by going up two notes from the third note in that triad and placing the fourth note on that third space and you can create a seventh of any fundamentally built major chord by going up three spaces from the third note in the triad and placing a fourth note on that fourth space. By fundamentally built, I just mean that the chord is built in the most basic format with the root note being the same as the key of the chord. No fancy voicings or chord inversions. Just understand the basics first. Then the fancy voicings, chord inversions, and anything else that you're going to do can help you take this concept to a whole new level. So let's talk about that within a system that you can use to create unlimited good melodies. Ah, you like that segue? I'm telling you, man, they don't just hand out those silver plaques for no reason. The melody development wheel. Here's how to make the most of this basic music theory concept in eight simple steps. No complications required. Step one, drop the ego. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use the damn wheel. I get grieved a few times a week for talking about how important basic chord progressions are, and I think that's great, like honestly. Not only are there producers that refuse to use the only method for making good melodies, but they will also spend their time arguing in the comments of YouTube videos and Instagram reels instead of, I don't know, practicing and getting better. Less competition overall for the people who are willing to put their heads down, learn, and work. If you can let your ego go and use the systems that have been in place for thousands of years, your melodies are going to end up sounding amazing in no time. Step two, listen to music you like or popular music in general. The music you like is going to influence your specific melody making style. That's the reason I like the Travis Scott chord progression so much. Not necessarily because of Travis Scott, but because many of my favorite pop and trap songs use that chord progression really well. Step three, listen to chord progressions in that music. Over 80% of songs will follow basic popularized chord progressions. Listen to music. Over time, note the songs whose melodies make you feel something deeper. There's going to be a good chance that it's the chord progression that's causing that feeling. And the best part is that this will differ from person to person, so it helps people stay unique. Step four, look up how that chord progression is built. Figure out the structure of the chord progressions that you like. This might seem like it's the most intensive part of this process, but it's made super easy by things like Chordify.net, which has the chord progressions drawn out for many, many songs. And once you get more depth, you can use tools like Toonbat to find the key of any song. And then you can build out the chords by ear based on the knowledge that you get provided from that. In the rare case that Chordify doesn't already have the song mapped out for you. Step five, study, remember, save the chord progression. Now that you know the chord progression structure, you need to remember it. Me personally, I just learned to make it once and then I save it within a folder in the centerfold drum kit, which gets updated regularly for all purchasers. Do this so that you build an arsenal of chord progressions that one, fit your style, and two, you know will work each time. All the best musicians have always done this and always will. Step six, build upon the chord progression. There are many ways to spice up basic chord progressions. We talked about how Houston Fornication finishes off its chord progression with one last chord, a resolving chord. You can also use a concept called chord inversion. This is when you move the notes of chords up or down an octave to give it a more distinct feeling or character. Chord development is something I'm gonna make a video about soon. So if you wanna see that ASAP, drop a comment below letting me know. You can also check out this chord progression workshop on my channel. Step seven, layer sounds, sound selection. This is really where the magic happens because no two producers are gonna layer sounds exactly the same. Even when you try copying someone exactly, you'll get something slightly different. This is another topic that I wanna make a video about soon. So let me know down in the comments if you want that ASAP. For now, let me give you a workflow I use when layering melodies which I actually described a few years ago in this video. Start with keys, bells, or plucks, some kind of sound that's gonna give your melody body.
Then add an ARP, and this is gonna give your melody ambient texture. Next, add a pad, which will be used to fill up stereo space and make your melody sound more full. Then add bass, and do I even need to explain why? Like, never leave the bass out. And then the last step, which is optional, add a harmonizing top melody with some kind of lead instrument. Step eight, most important, practice. This isn't going to be something that you can do once and then suddenly it's in your toolbox. The melody development wheel needs to be worked regularly. Even I struggle when I go too long without practicing my melodies. And I've had my melodies on CBS before. So never think you can practice too much. Now get out there and make some bangers. Check out the links in the description. I've got a bunch of gifts down there for you, like the 14 drum kit. There's also the centerfold drum kit down there. It's the best trap drum kit on the internet. There's a bunch more good stuff down there, like free loop kits, a free course on how to build a business just like mine. Gifts that I made just for you because I fuck with you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Peace.